Romans chapter 8 8 to 17. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, on the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead, will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through whom we cry, Our Bar, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. When Saint Paul speaks of the flesh he is speaking of people who live on earth and are only interested in themselves. People who live in the Spirit are those who have found God and He is active in their lives. Just as the fleshly unbeliever has no need of God and are by their thoughts and actions leading themselves to everlasting death, the believer knows he needs God and though his thoughts and actions is headed for everlasting life. Did you notice the phrase the Spirit of God dwells in you? The word dwell means to be at home. The Spirit is within you because Christ promised that He would send the Spirit, but is the Spirit of God really at home with you? Do you allow the Spirit to come into all segments of your life? When I was a child in public school the teachers led us in the Lord's Prayer at the beginning of our day. I'm sure you have heard the news reports of removing the Ten Commandments from courthouses. Now people want to remove in God we trust from our money. As a society we seem to be asking the Spirit to leave us. Saint Paul tells us to allow the Spirit to live in our lives and give us the courage to turn our backs on sin. If you live by the flesh, worldly standards, you will die an eternal death. When we truly allow the Spirit to live within us, the Spirit will give us the strength to ignore sin and build up our eternal treasure in heaven. Paul uses the illustration of adoption to reveal a great truth. In the culture of the day if a man was without a son, a male heir, he could adopt a son, even if the male was a slave. When we fall into sin don't we become slaves to our sins. At the time of Jesus adoption had two segments one private and the other public. Being led by the Spirit to the baptismal font is a private affair but the conformation that completes the adoption is a formal public event. When adopted all ties with your former family and lifestyle were cut, as a result you became a legitimate child of a new family. In baptism we are adopted into God's family and we become heir to the family estate in heaven. With every family comes privileges and responsibilities. How then were we freed from slavery and adopted into the Father's family? Let us turn to another of Paul's writings for the answer. Galatians 4 4-6 But when the time had fully come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abar, Father. If the Spirit leads us to agree to the terms of adoption then we become joint heirs with the Son who ransomed us. We complete our adoption in a public way by calling God Abba, Father. We are now members of, and united with, the Trinitarian family of God. 